Well, Happy New Year, everybody. It's time again to look forward to a new year of games. So, I'm going to be looking at the first quarter, which is January, February, and March, because these are basically known games for known release dates, unless they get pushed back. So, I'm going to look at my top 14 games, I guess, that I'm looking forward to. And it's all in release order. So let's get to the first one, which is Resident Evil HD Remaster. Um, this is basically an HD remastering of the GameCube remake of the first Resident Evil. God, that's such a weird thing to explain. Um, I love that thing a lot. I, I played that very recently, about two years ago, for the first time on the GameCube. And man, does it look, it still looks impressive. Uh, of course, this is before I had a PS4 and that arrow came out, of course, but still, I mean, just going back to it, I mean, today, I took a look to it just to see, like, did it really age that well? And yeah, it did, so seeing it in remastered form and with trophies and stuff is going to be super awesome. Uh, the next is Citizens of Earth, which looks like a weird, quirky little RPG that looks, it, it, it's touting an Earthbound vibe where it's the earth is being invaded and you're trying to get people to come to your side with this political agenda in order to defeat uh, the enemy and it looks just kind of really bizarre and wacky and Atlas is publishing it and um, it it has some promise um, not a lot has been shown in the game but I think it just looks quirky enough to you know give it a try I'm very curious about it to say the least another game I'm very curious about is Dying Light which is basically Dead Island 2 minus Dead Island 2 if it ever came out. This is the game that the team at Techland really wanted to make and then <laughs> there was the Riptide and stuff like that. But this is like the true successor uh, if none of that other garbage came out like Escape Dead Island whatever. They turned into a weird franchise. I don't know why because the first one was good but not great and then they announced Dying Light and then Dead Island 2 and <laughs> they have the uh, they had the Riptide already out, and that was terrible, and Escape Dead Island was terrible. So Dead Island 2 and Dying Light are weird competing things that are coming out. Anyway, it, it, yes, Dying Light. So it is first-person zombie killing things, and it looks like Mirror's Edge, but with zombies in it. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's probably going to be terrible, but I, I, do, I am interested in it because I kind of liked Dead Island, despite its flaws um, in the original. Uh, for next, we have Grim Fandango Remastered, which is an adventure game I never got to play because I was never... I never really played adventure games back in the day. I never had a PC to support it. It was very re recently uh, in my life on Earth that I was even have uh, the accessibility of computers because I had Macs a lot, and uh, it's, uh, it's hard to get stuff going. I mean, when Steam came to the Macs, I mean... Then it kind of revolutionized, and everybody was like, yeah, let's put stuff on Mac. And, of course, that's not to say that there weren't great games that also came to Mac way back in the day, but, I mean, I really didn't get my own computer to 2007, so... I mean, that's saying something. Um, <laughs> anyway, long diatribe there. Uh, so, Grim Fandango, yes, Double Fine looks awesome. People said it's one of the best. Will I like it? It's going to be, you know, it is going to hold up in terms of, like, the mechanics. Hard to say, but I am curious about it, which is, like, this entire list. Um, especially this next one. Life is Strange, um, uh, Capcom, uh, by the team... That Dead Remember Me, which uh, I think I played maybe two hours of and then quit because I was like, yeah, you know, it looks really pretty, but I didn't really like the aesthetic or I'm, I, I should say the um, mechanics and the, the aesthetic of how everything was presented to you. Uh, I had promise, but it just nothing that made me say, yeah, I think I'll give this a try, even though I have it downloaded free from PlayStation Plus. Maybe I'll go back to it someday, I don't know. Anyway, uh, yeah, the new trailer came out very recently, and a lot of people kept been saying, gone home, this is gone home, gone home with this, gone home with that, and you know, it looks... Adventure games are good, because one of my favorite things in video games, even before like this huge uproar came about, that would say around Uncharted 2, was just, um, just RPGs. I played RPGs a lot, and that's what kind of hooked me with the story. 
And I love games, even if they're bad, if they have a good story or something to hook me, you know? And, you know, uh, Telltale's been doing some really awesome stuff with just adventure games in general. You know, nothing too hard about the puzzles. It just kind of, you know, makes you go. Uh, it still feels involved enough to get you going because you're making decisions. You are, you know, you are exploring these environments. You know, it's not too hard, but it, that's not to say there's nothing to do. And, uh, you know, it's, it's better than actually watching something because you, you do earn some kind of progression. Um, but yeah, so that's why Life is Strange looks interesting because it looks like another cool adventure game. And, um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what else I can say about that. But let's, let's move into February where we have Evolve coming out. And, you know, I play a little bit of Left 4 Dead. And uh, the Team Blazed co-op experience has been something that I've been missing a lot in my life. And I wish there was more games where that there was more of a focus on that. And this one is purely multiplayer-centric, uh, where it doesn't look like there's going to be a story, and you're just like, these classes, and you're going after these monsters, which is like Monster Hunter, but more condensed into a multiplayer arena. It is a very unique idea for a game, and I just want to see how... Um, you know, it works out. Is it going to be fun to play as the guys, or is it going to be fun to play as the monster? Is one side going to be better than the other? A lot of people said that playing the monster is fun. Some people said it's kind of shitty compared to how overpowered everybody else is. <sighs> Who's to say? But it does look um, promising, to say the least. And um, this next one, I'm not sure if it's going to be great or not, because I didn't care for the original. Uh, let's not tease anymore. It's Kirby and the Rainbow Curse, which is a sequel to Kirby and the Rainbow Curse, which was, or, I'm sorry, I just said it twice. Kirby and the Canvas Curse, that was a beginning, um, DS game, where you control Kirby, he was like a little ball, and you made little paths for him to go into with the stylus, which is cool. I love that the Kirby names take a lot of chances in terms of aesthetics, like this one is made out of clay, or, again, controlling with a ball. This one's made out of clay, and you're controlling with a ball. And, uh, I, I didn't find that fun the first time, because I'm not a fan of, uh, motion controls, and I know this is not motion control, this is touch controls, but, uh, I, don't, I don't know, like, having to guide Kirby just seems really shitty to me. I didn't like it the first time. Probably not going to like it again, but the clay really makes me want to play it, so I guess we'll see. Huh. Ah, there's a lot of Capcom in this list, and there's a lot of Resident Evil on this list, which is just two, but uh, yeah, Resident Evil Resolutions 2, Episode 1. And I say that because every single week there's going to be a new um, Revelations, like literally every single week. So the game is all done when they're releasing it, they just decided to piecemeal it out. Even though you can get, like, a pretty good deal, um, if you buy, like, a combo pack, I think you get, like, a discount if you buy it all at once, but it's, it's still really weird. It's like, why wouldn't you just, you know, release it? It's not really episodic gaming, because it's all done, and you're just making us pay for each episode, or a combo pack, but making us wait to play it. It's, it's a very, I think it was the wrong way to go about doing it, but I really, really liked uh, Revelations the first time around on the 3DS. I tried the HD version, and it was cool, but um, I liked it better as like a portable experience, and man, that 3D looked awesome. Like Seriously, the 3D was like one of the best 3DS games um, in terms of like the graphical power of that 3D and just popping out at you. You can even turn the 3D up in the actual game itself. That aside, um, Claire's coming back, and <laughs> Barry Burton's coming back, and his daughter's coming around. I don't know, it's, uh, it looks like it's gonna be Saw-ish. I don't know. Uh, um, yeah, Resident Evil, um, too much Resident Evil, I think. <laughs> At the end of January, and then the end of February, and then four weeks into, uh, the next one, so it's just, yeah, this should have really piecemeal it out for the entire year, uh, I would say, but, uh... Speaking of something that, well, bad segue. Uh, the Order 1886. This is a game that has been delayed and delayed. A lot of bad previews have been written about it. A lot of good previews have been written about it. A lot of people are very confused what this game is going to be. I am very confused as well, but I am also very hopeful because it looks like you know the steampunk um, vibe is really cool. It looks like you're fighting werewolves, and also like rebels, and there's zeppelins, and I don't know, I think it's me, awesome game. Um, 
I think it's going to have problems. I think this is going to be one of those games where a lot of people are going to hate it, and probably a lot of people are going to like it and, you know, forgive its flaws, which is something that happened to The Evil Within, which I really liked, but a lot of people hate it, but um, it made my top 10 in games list of 2014, so maybe Order will as well. And it's really the first big PS4 exclusive that I'm looking forward to. And it's coming over at the same time as Infamous. And uh, a lot of people forget about Infamous, but I think that was also another great game. Uh, that aside, let's just move on to the next one, which is Blade Store Nightmare. And, <laughs> okay. So this is a offshoot of the Dynasty Warriors franchise, but this one takes place in a medieval setting where you're fighting, as, you know, like Joan of Arc and stuff like that. And the first time around, I played very briefly and I watched one of my friends play a lot. And the shitty thing about that was they decided to make it, you know, more strategical and not co-op, which is the best part of those games is playing with a friend because, to be honest, they're not exactly stellar stellar games, but there are fun games to play, especially with a friend. It's just like a very easy jump in, jump out kind of game. Um, and the ability to have multiplayer finally in this one. And the last game came out a long, long time ago, so I am very, very interested in this one, um, to say the least. But uh, uh, moving on, another game that looks like it could be a fun multiplayer or kind of thing um, is Codename Steam. And, you know, every March or February, there's always a 3DS game that gets me hooked. And I think Nintendo has been very great about that. 2013, it was Fire Emblem. 2014, it was Bravely Default. This time, it might be codenamed Steam, though this one seems like it's too full of itself. You know, it's um, Fire Emblem people. It is a kind of more Valkyria Chronicles type tactical game where you're moving your units around and then you're shooting and stuff. But I think it's trying to be wackier than it is. Like, oh, your secret agency, Steam, for Abraham Lincoln. Isn't that weird? Isn't that crazy to see Abraham Lincoln in armor? It's like, in a world where there's been weirder stuff than that. Uh, it's, yeah. And... <laughs> I don't know, I have a weird feeling about this game, like it's either going to be delayed or it's going to come out and suck, but I mean, Fire Emblem people, I gotta, I gotta have some faith in this one. Um, next, this is a hard one for me because I also think this one is going to be delayed, which is Battlefield Hardline. Now normally I wouldn't give the time of day to Battlefield, especially at the Fiasco 4, Tried 3 and 4, did not care for them, That's especially the multiplayer, did not care for it. But knowing that Visceral is making this campaign and it is a cop game is kind of cool because there's not that many cop games. There's, uh, you know what, there's no cop games and it looks like it might be the Shield the video game, which might be pretty cool, even though there already was a Shield game, but this one might be an actual better representation of like a Hard Street Cops and stuff like that and uh, Urban Warfare. And uh, I love Dead Space. If you didn't know that Visceral made the Dead Space games, those are really good. Three, not so much, so maybe. Uh, I just. Very weird about this one. Very, very weird about this one. Uh, also, very. I can't believe it's gonna come out. Final Fantasy Type Zero HD. I, I gotta hope. Square Enix is pretty good when they put games uh, slaughtered for spring releases. And it's supposed to have a Final Fantasy 15 demo, although they keep on going back and forth between, oh, you gotta get the first copies of it, or, yeah, I mean, you'll get the demo eventually. You'll just get a pass for it, but we don't know when the demo's gonna come out. It's just so crazy! But, I mean, as much as I, 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 I got the whole patched game. I have the PSP game on disc, and I downloaded it, and got the English patch so I was able to play it without feeling guilty because I actually own it. And then they announced the HD version, and I'm like, I might as well wait for that, even though I really want to play it on my PSP, like, really bad. But, 
Yeah, I, uh, I'm hoping it's gonna be good and worth the wait because I've been waiting for this game for a long, long time. And I actually got my hands on it and then I decided to wait even longer because they announced this HD version. Ah, this better be good and that Final Fantasy 15 demo better be coming soon. God damn it, Square Enix. <laughs> uh, but this last one I'm very, very hopeful for because I'm kind of new to this whole Dark Souls craze. You know, I, I tried Demon Souls and I played a little bit of Dark Souls. I played the entirety of Dark Souls 2 and that was awesome. But a lot of people didn't like it as much as the original Dark Souls. But this one, this one looks like it's supposed to be the real successor to Dark Souls and Demon Souls and Bloodborne. Yeah, everything about it looks great. I just hope it doesn't... I just... God, these games are punishing, but I, I really want to enjoy it. Uh, I mean, I should just say Bloodborne and Upset and then shut this thing up, but uh, yeah. Anyway, that's my few choices for some games, and there's some more coming out, of course, in between there, but these are my top 14. Hopefully, they become my top 14 games of the year, but I'll have to make that list down because it's probably going to be a top 10 again, but uh, who knows? Boom, ba -chack, boom, boom, ba -chack, boom, ba -chack, boom, 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 bo